This week, we lost legendary car designer Marcello Gandini, who passed age 85 on 13th of March 2024. In the car world, this is a very sad and significant loss, not just because he was one of the very best car designers we've ever had, certainly one of my very favorites, but because in losing him, we also lost the father of the supercar. Yep, I cannot overstate that enough. Marcello Gandini was born in Turin in Italy on August 26, 1938. And actually he wanted to be a musician because his father was an orchestra conductor. However, somehow he was involved in creating a new car body for a friend who'd wrecked his car. And this was enough to bring him to the attention of the famous design house Bertoni. He must have been something very special indeed, even at that age, because Giorgetto Giugiario, another one of my very favorite uh, car designers, and he, uh, he was the head of design there at the time. And he threatened to walk if Bertoni hired Marcello. Anyway, two years later, Giugiaro did move to, when well, he moved to Ghia, and that opened the door for Gandini. Aged just 27, he joined Bertoni in 1965, and he was there for 14 years. The illustrious and glittering lineup of absolute automotive icons this man has given us is truly remarkable. But first, let's look at the father of the supercar thing. Check this out guys, it's my book, it's my first novel and it's written for car fans like you. It's a fun political action thriller, it's full of cool cars and spectacular action. Get your copy now at Amazon.com. The legend goes that the great journalist uh, LJK Setwright, who wrote for Car Magazine, I had the honor of meeting him once actually, um, he did a, a feature for the magazine, a big drive feature, in which he went to Italy to pick up a Lamborghini Miura and drive it back to the UK. And apparently in that feature he referred to it as a supercar. And most regard that as the first time something that we would recognize even today as a supercar was actually called a supercar. Now guess who designed the Miura? Yep. It was Marcello Gandini. To be fair, he was pretty much a Lamborghini design master of his time. Um, and we can see his influence and see how it permeates even into the Lamborghinis of today. So the Mura, this dramatic, lasciviously long, curvy, voluptuous thing is frankly sexy as hell. I mean, talk about adorable. He even put eyelashes in the headlights. However, for the generation that grew up in the 1970s and the 80s, there was one ultimate supercar, something that simply transcended everything else. That didn't have to be given the title of supercar, it outright owned it from day one. And that, of course, was a Lamborghini Countach. Now, if you're a student of design, it's kind of hard to reconcile that the Mura and the Countach both came from the same pen, as they look fundamentally different. You've got the elegant allure of the Mura, and then that is replaced by this sort of brutal statement of radical futurism, which is literally cutting edge lines, fantastical flares, and sensational wedge-shaped profile. So somewhere along the line, um, after the mirror, Gandini had become the wedge design man, and the sharp, crisp lines pretty much became his thing. I mean, check this out. Between these two cars, the Mura and the Countach, he gave us the four-seat Lamborghini Espada and the outlandish Marzal concept. The Uraco was his too, and then he gave Ferrari a milestone. Okay, so this Dino 308 GT4 wasn't always regarded as pretty, not like the 246 Dino that it replaced anyway, um, and only recently it started to be truly acknowledged and prices have started going up, but it's significant for being the first Ferrari to have a rare mid-engine V8 layout, and it was a 2 plus 2. Gandini also deployed pretty extreme examples of his wedge-shaped design philosophy with Lancia. He was responsible for the Lancia Stratos, another favorite of mine. Imagine this flying saucer-shaped car flying down rally stages, successfully as well. But if you think this was brilliantly wacky, check out the car that sired it, the 1970 Stratos Zero Concept. It's so alien and so low that the windscreen was the door and you had to drop down into it. Did you ever see the 1988 Michael Jackson movie, Moonwalker? The bit before he's the smooth criminal. This is the car that he actually turns into. It's a stunningly weird car for a brilliantly weird film. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Are you enjoying the video? Well, make sure you've punched the like button. It helps. But the wedge design wasn't just reserved for the super rich or the super eccentric. He also designed the Fiat X19, widely regarded as the first accessible mid-engine sports car and one that inspired the very similar first-generation Toyota MR2. Other notable Gandini cars that you'll recognize is the Alfa Romeo Montreal, the Innocenti Mini, which is basically a squared-off, rebodied version of the British Mini, the first BMW 5 Series, the Citroen BX, 
Fiat Dino Coupe, the first Volkswagen Polo, Maserati Ghibli, the second generation car, Maserati Kamsin, Maserati Shamal, and even the second generation Renault 5. Shout out time guys, thank you so much. Hey, if you enjoy my content, why not get involved? Buy me a coffee. You can do that at either of these links. Or if you're watching on YouTube, buy me a thanks or take out a membership. It all helps, it really does. And let's check out some of these other crazy concepts that he came up with, like the 1976 Ferrari Rainbow, the Volvo Tundra, which I think it looks like it actually became the Citroen VX, the Lamborghini P140, which was kind of like the Gallardo of its day, the incredible Citroen GS Camargue, and another extraordinary and extremely low supercar concept, the 1968 Alfa Romeo Carabo, with the scissor doors, angular rear wheel arch, and super sharp wedge, this is pretty much the car that paved the way for the Countach that followed. I'll leave you with a few more of the father of the supercar's progeny, the second generation d Tomasa Pantera, the prototype of the Bugatti EB110, the original prototype of the Lamborghini Diablo, although he's a bit annoyed with the Lambert owner's Chrysler messing with his design at the time, which of course then resulted in him replicating his own vision for the car into what became the amazing Cezetta Maroda V1610, the first V16 supercar, albeit sadly short-lived with only 13 ever made. I've always been a mad fan of the wedge-shaped design school. I just love the purity of a shape that looks like it's slicing through the air at warp speed even when it's standing still. Marcello Gandini is a car design hero. Long may his memory live on. I want to hear which are your favorite Gandini cars in the comments below. A brown car, car.